How's it going everyone? My name is Agent Mulder and welcome to our Man Eater Gameplay Tips and Tricks video. In this video, we'll discuss where and how to find caches, license plates, landmarks, along with other hidden areas that will reward you with nutrients that help upgrade your shark, what you get for defeating bounty hunters and apex predators, and finally what starting upgrades I decided to focus on at the beginning of the game. All that and more straight ahead. If you enjoy this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for a lot more. Now without further ado, let's dive into our Man Eater Gameplay Tips and Tricks. The tiny pup responds with an instinct for survival. You never want to turn off that gun. At the beginning of Man Eater, there are four different ways how you can get nutrients rewards to upgrade your shark. The first is attacking any swimming creatures you run into, fish, alligators, turtles, anything, and try to munch down on them, in which case you will always get some type of nutrient reward that you can use later to upgrade your shark. So far, there are three different ways I've discovered where you can get nutrients rewards in big bundles. The first are with caches. Now these caches will be yellow containers that will glow red with a light, signaling that you're close by to one of them. So far, I've discovered these caches at the bottom of the ocean, hidden away in rubble, sitting on top of sewage pipes, or buried deep inside sewage containers oftentimes being protected by alligators. You can also even define these caches when you just see them covered on the other side of a wall, in which case you'll have to jump out of the water, hop on land a little bit, and then jump down a pipe in order to get to it. These caches reward you a substantial amount of nutrients rewards. I highly recommend that within the first 40 minutes when you start off on the bayou, is to swim very low to the ocean floor, while obviously popping out your sonar as many times as you can. When you're near a cache, it will pop up on the front of your screen with the logo of a cache symbol on it. Always keep looking at the bottom of the ocean floor when you're swimming around because these are usually the areas where you'll find them. Next are license plates. Now I have found a few license plates under the water but so far the majority of the license plates I have found usually are sitting on top of docks, small islands, or sometimes they'll be sitting on top of a boat in which case you'll have to jump out of the water and bounce off the boat in order to jump up and get it. These license plates sometimes will not offer the same amount of rewards that you'll get for taking out caches but they still offer to you a good bounty of nutrients rewards. Next up are landmarks. Now landmarks are pretty easy to find provided you know where to look. Any given time you'll notice there are certain areas, especially in the bayou, where you'll see abandoned theme parks, abandoned boats, cars underwater that have their lights turned on, Oftentimes, these areas will consist of landmarks. Once again, pop out your sonar, in which case you'll pick up a sign on the middle of your screen. These landmarks will offer you some decent nutrients rewards as well. Now, one of the best things to keep your eyes open for are steel gates under the water, in which case your shark can break into. So far, I've discovered a few of these places tucked away underneath rubble, or for example, in the bayou, the level that you first start off in, you'll notice it's on the side of riverbeds. Now, some of these gates actually require you to be at a certain level. For example, some gates will say you need to be a teenage shark, an elder shark or an adult shark to break into them. When you break into these hidden areas, you're going to find at least one cache lying around, along with finding a bunch of fish you can chow down on that get you even more nutrients rewards. Definitely try to clear out these secret areas as many times as you can to get the max amount of nutrients rewards you can get. Also a nice little side tip as well, is keep your eyes open for albino type animals. These albino fish and alligators can sometimes be kind of rare to find, so when you do see one and you're at the right level, be sure to try to attack and eat it, that way you can start collecting on those special nutrients that you'll need much later down the road to get better upgrades for your shark. Also keep in mind that whatever level your shark is at, it's always best to try to fight creatures that are either a level lower than you, or maybe one or two levels higher than you, that way you have a decent chance of winning a fight. I wouldn't know him from Adam. If he kill another fisherman, that's between them and him. Yeah. Speaking of fight, let's talk about bounty hunters and apex predators. Now I'm still getting used to this game so I'm not quite 100% sure how certain bounty hunters jump into the fray, but so far I've fought two bounty hunters and one against them, simply by attacking large groups of humans that I needed to get through in order to continue on with my story. With defeating each one of these bounty hunters was pretty easy. These bounty hunters will usually be accompanied by other humans on boats using machine guns and shotguns to try to take you down. Simply swimming at the boat at high speed, jumping out of the water and trying to grab the hunter off the boat and drag him under the water, you could automatically kill these bounty hunters really quickly. Don't worry about doing any damage to these boats, so they keep jumping out of the water and grabbing the hunters until finally you bring down the bounty hunter and the rest of its crew. Once a bounty hunter is dead, you'll start to unlock certain special evolution abilities to where you can then upgrade your shark with. For example, one of the first bounty hunters I took down, I actually got a bioelectrical jaw. This jaw then allows me to then stun my opponents from time to time to where I can actually do a little extra damage 
while they're still trying to recover from the electric stun. This is very useful, especially up against Apex Predators. The other upgrade I got from taking down another bounty hunter, which allowed me to get extra health and extra resilience, especially when I jump onto boats to try to take down other hunters without them having to knock me off. But now let's talk about Apex Predators. These Apex Predators, in my opinion, prove to have a much tougher challenge than bounty hunters do. Unlike bounty hunters, to where you can just jump out of the water, grab them off a boat, bring them down and chew them to bits, in which case they'll die pretty quickly, Apex Predators are just other fish just as powerful or if not more powerful than you are. I highly recommend that when you engage an Apex Predator, try to lure them into an area where there's tons of fish nearby for you to chow down on and get extra health when you need it. When I fought against my first Apex Predator, I was able to use my stun jaw quite often to where I was able to get a few extra hits before I had to swim away and try to dodge his attacks. Once you take down an Apex Predator, they'll offer you certain upgrades that only Apex Predators offer that are different than that of Bounty Hunters. Not to mention the fact that even once you take down an Apex Predator, you can eat more of the meat off these creatures to where you'll gain even more nutrients for rewards. Don't let those chunks of meat go to waste. The more you eat those things, the more rewards you're going to get out of them. Now let's move on to the upgrades I've gotten from my shark so far. At the beginning of the game, you'll be able to get your sonar ability right off the bat. Try to get your sonar ability all the way up to tier 3, or at the minimum, tier 2. The reason why your sonar should be one of the most important things for you to focus on upgrading is that the more wider range you'll be able to get this thing, the better off you're going to be able to catch on to any of those caches that are nearby, license plates, landmarks, or any other type of nutrients that you'll need to upgrade your shark. Now let's focus on the two different types of jaws I have for my shark so far. The first one allows me to give a little extra damage to every single time I put on a bite, and of course the other one is the bioelectrical one that I got after defeating a bounty hunter. My bioelectrical jaw is easily my favorite one so far. I've upgraded it up to tier 3, in which case it will stun my opponents for a lot longer while also doing a little extra damage. And finally, the other ability that I have is called Hardy, which allows me to get a little extra more health and more resilience towards taking damage, and also to where I can jump onto craft and boats and attack hunters or other people without worrying about them knocking me off too soon. Don't worry, I'll be diving into a lot more upgrades the more I play into the game and unlock and give you a personal experience about what it feels like to use some of these abilities and whether or not they're worth your time to invest into at all. And finally, the last thing I want to say is, is that when you first jump into this game into the bayou area, there is no rush whatsoever to move quickly throughout the story. In fact, I highly recommend that you spend the first 40 to 50 minutes in this area alone looking for caches, just eating away at any types of creatures that you're able to eat, and that way you can at least upgrade your shark to at least level 4 or level 5 before you leave the area. But again, it's up to you how you'd like to play. And that's it so far for our Man Eater Gameplay Tips and Tricks video. We'll be doing another Tips and Tricks video on Man Eater very, very soon for part 2, so be sure to stick around for that. I'm Agent Mulder, and I really hope you've enjoyed this video, and don't forget to click on a like, share, and subscribe for a lot more coming very soon. Once again, thank you so much for enjoying our Man Eater Gameplay Tips and Tricks video, and I'll see you next time. Ah!